Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing tonight? Enjoying our talks? Are you excited about Ivy? Have you heard about Ivy? No. No. Well, you are here for the right talk, then. <laughs> okay, so I'm Mike Moreland. Uh, you can find me on Twitter under Mike VS Code. Uh, I create some snippets for VS Code, so if you use VS Code, you might be using my snippets. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, been using computers since the Commodore 64. And if you don't know what that is, I'll be crying later. So I'm not going to ask you if you know that. <clears throat> anyway, so what is Ivy? So Ivy is definitely something we should all be excited about. So it's the next generation of compilation and rendering pipeline. Cool, it's actually typing what I'm saying. <laughs> That's not as cool. <laughs> so why should we care about Ivy? So as developers and users, we want everything to be smaller, faster, and simpler. Wrong way. So with smaller, how do you make something smaller? I'm going to go into details later, but you're going to hear words like tree shakeable. Do everyone know what tree shakeable is? We have one person. So I'm just going to say right now, it's about you're only going to pay for what you're actually going to use. So faster. So let's assume we made our JavaScript bundle smaller. Uh, that also means that one your, once your user try to load those applications, since the bundle are now smaller, they're going to have faster download time. And your browser that's basically going to run these bundles has less code to run, run, so it's going to run faster as well. So basically, your startup time is going to improve the smaller your JavaScript file are. Simpler, you're going to see this later. All this actually becomes easier to debug. And if you've been debugging Angular, you have seen like really deep call stacks, really weird code if you try to look what's actually generated. But in the future, you're actually going to be able to read that code and understand what it's doing. It's pretty amazing, actually. So here you're thinking, should you worry? So how many using Angular today? How many been around since Angular 4? Two? Angular 1? OK, so we have a few people from Angular 1 here. So you know when we went to Angular 2, it was more than painful. Yeah. <laughs> So with everything now changing to new rendering pipeline, you might be scared if you have that experience from the past. But the thing is, this will actually be backwards compatible. So if you remember when you went from Angular 2 to Angular 4, and for those of you that didn't do that, Angular 3 didn't exist, so that's why I'm saying from 2 to 4, they already changed that rendering pipeline back then. And that was without any issue. So they're doing the same thing now. They're basically rewriting Angular, but all the APIs that you are using are staying the same. So how do they know this is going to work? So inside Google, they actually are always on the latest version of Angular. So they, they're already running and trying this upgrade on over 600 applications just to see what errors they're getting. So that means you're not going to see any of this live and default till they fixed all those errors. And then, of course, they're going to do the same thing with the community, have them run and report the errors. So that's basically how we know it's going to be backwards compatible. and. What they're aiming for is zero breaking changes. So I mentioned a little bit about the design goals behind Ivy to make all of this works. Uh, it's about making things tree shakeable and locality. So tree shakeable, it simply means that the build process will remove the unused code from your result. So that sounds really good, right? It's 
Of course, we can make things smaller by just removing the things we don't use. Why didn't we do that before? I mean, the thing is, it's not that simple to figure out what in an application is used or not. Sure, you can have, I mean, comments are easy to remove, not used. You can have some dead code, some if statements, some case statement that could never happen and you could be smart enough to figure that out. But other than that, it becomes really hard to start to get rid of those things. <clears throat> and making things worth, I mean, they would basically have to run every permutation of your program, test that, see what code is running or not. I mean, think about the video game, you would have to play all those cases. I mean, you can't get rid of a, the final screen just because nobody got to it. I mean, Copali thinks that no one's ever gonna solve this game and see the screen. It's all those cases has to be there. <clears throat> so when we updated the rendering pipeline and compiler in the past, uh, when we went to two, from two to four, we went to something called the view engine. So back in Angular 2, when we first released that, our bundles were about a little bit over 0.7 megabytes. And then we figure out basically, oh, we can make it smaller by, we don't have to ship the compiler. The compiler was actually half a megabyte. So we could make Angular much smaller by having things pre-compiled. You have two compilers just in time and you can ahead of time compilation. But, um, but by having everything compiled, you don't need to ship your compiler, and now you're down to about 250K for your Angular application. So that was when you went from two to four. After that, we figured, okay, what can we do next to make this smaller? So the view engine, they basically compiled your application to, um, you're basically, where the code you're writing turns into a big data structure. And then you have a view engine that are running and interpreting that data structure. So think of a view engine as a big case statement. So whatever it sees here, it's gonna say case, blah, 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 do this. Something else is gonna do this. Get a new instruction here, case, 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 fun for what it's looking for, do this. So it needs to be able to do everything your compiled code, the data structure is doing. So the thing with that is like, while that makes your code smaller, it didn't make Angular smaller because they still needed to support everything. So in order to make Angular smaller, again, they need to know what you're using. So instead of having this view engine, now they're compiling everything into instructions instead. So these instructions Basically, think about a div. It's you have a start element, that's a div, and you have end element, that's a div. So those are gonna call a static function inside of Angular. So by compiling your code now to instructions, you actually know exactly what instructions you're using inside Angular. So if we have somebody that's gonna talk about decorators, so you have pipe, for instance, I don't know if you're gonna mention that, but if you're not using pipes, for instance, why should you pay the price for having that in Angular? So then that big case statement in the past would have to have a case. If it finds a decorator, name a pipe, blah, 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 do this. Now in the future, we can say, hey, you actually don't have any instructions that referencing our static method for pipe. So we can also remove that. So it means when you're shipping the code, you're also making Angular smaller with IB. So that's how we can make everything really small. But of course, the more you're using your Angular, the more you're gonna pay for. But you're never gonna use all of it. Think about material, you might use card and the buttons and a few other things, but you might not use their data grid. So you don't, again, you don't wanna pay for that. So I said it was two design goals, tree shakeable and locality. So the second one, locality, it just means that the compiler 
only uses information that's defined in that component and in the decorator and its class. So be, when it's looking at your file, the compiler is only going to look at that. It doesn't care about other components. It doesn't care about other modules. Today, everything gets compiled into module, but you also need to do statics analysis of your entire applications to figure out what your code's going to look at. In the future, it's just going to compile that component. It doesn't even care about the module. Module as a concept is kind of going away at some point in the future. So if you think about it, it only has to compile that component. When I first heard about it, it's like, OK, so what? Then I started thinking about, wait, what about build time? So think about that. When you rebuild your application, if you only changed one component, guess what? You only need to recompile that one component. So now your build time is going to get a lot faster as well. So if you want to play with IV today, uh, you hopefully all use the Angular CLI, or I don't know how you create your applications. But all you have to do is NGNU, just as before, your application name, and do dash dash enable IV. And then you have to take the next step. Check out this guide. So let's see if we can get to it. No, do, 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 do. So on the Angular website, you can actually see the next version of Angular IO if you go to next.angular.io. So don't go to angular.io, go to next.angular.io. And there you'll see a guide for how to build something with Angular with Ivy. So again, let me make things a little bit bigger, maybe. Now you should be able to read it. So again, we create our application. There are some compiler options that you're going to have to change. Enable Ivy to true which also means you can try this out on your existing applications. You can go in and do this manually, and if it doesn't work, change it back. Or keep version of your code, and you don't have to change it back. You just roll it back. There are, if, like I said, there's two compiler options you need to change. The next thing is routes. How you lazy load routes will change. Uh, but there's actually a schematic that got approved today uh, that actually updates your routes for free. So just run that schematic and you don't have to worry about it. So what's cool with before you had to route somewhere in order to lazy load your features. Does everyone know what lazy loading is? Uh, so think about it. You have multiple features in your application. When you start up your application, you don't want to load everything. So you can have a few things that are lazy loaded instead. So you're not going to load that feature or module till you navigate to it. Once you navigate to it, it's going to call the string, load the module, and activate the component. But that means you actually have to route it to it to load it. But in the future with IV, it becomes a function call instead for loading your module, which means you can load it at any time. And you can load it much earlier. You could load a component when they hover over a menu. Or you can load your next two components that you care about. You can make all your bundles a lot smaller and just be more creative how you load it. Okay. That's... So next was demo. 
let's do one more slide first while we're here. So you might be wondering about the current status of Ivy. Uh, there's a link to this slide in the deck. So you can go in and look where they're at, what's left. Always the documentation that's so. up. <laughs> 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 when is that not true for anything? I'm Swedish. I'm used to IKEA. But you've seen the documentation for the IKEA and been scratching your heads. So yes, if you have problems building IKEA for it, just call me. As a Swede, that's your test you have to take when you grow up. No, it's not. So let's go over and look at, so I basically went out and created a new application and it's gonna look very similar to what you're used to. Uh, I think it normally says, welcome to Angular. There's an Angular load, go a few links. I basically deleted that code and just had the welcome left. Other than that, it's doing the same thing. The reason I did all of this was because I wanted to see the size of things. So if we start with, I have two versions of this application, one with Ivy and one without Ivy. So if we go in and build the one without Ivy and you realize I do not have a dash dash prod here, it's because I actually want to show you the difference of what it's doing. Almost done. Okay. So let's build. So you can see this small application main here. It's basically eight and a half kilobyte big. There's some polyfills, there's a runtime. And then you have this huge vendor file. That's a scary one. And you'll notice something interesting when we build for prod and basically doing ahead of time compilation and minify and do a little bit of other things just to clean it up and make it smaller. So I think it comes available in version Yes. It's actually been available since version six, but that's, <laughs> they, they've been working on it for a long time. Uh, but like I said, there's more and more being complete uh, with, with every version. So when we build this with dash dash prod, you can see that my main file here actually got bigger than it was before. So that kind of scare, right? It looks like your application is getting bigger while it should be getting smaller. But the good news is here that vendor 3.2 megabyte is gone. Basically it's compiled together and it got rid of what it didn't need. So we're down at 56 kilobyte. Plus you also have to download your polyfills, blah, blah, blah. And the polyfills, sorry, 150 kilobytes and 50 kilobytes for polyfills. So if we do the same with Ivy, let's make this bigger since I already, and I ran this ahead of time while I was sitting back there. That's actually what I was doing. I wasn't writing in slides. Uh, so you can see your Ivy application in the, so first here, we have the version that's just doing the build and then we have a prod down here. So if you look at main.js, it's four kilobytes big. 
and the render vendor again is 1.6 megabyte so again your main becomes bigger so basically 20 kilobytes but remember this is not gzip or anything so once you do gzip it's going to cut it approximately half down to 10 kilobytes and somebody is laughing at whatever i'm saying but <laughs> I'm gonna have to read that afterwards. Anyway, so if you've heard about Ivy, you might have heard that they've done almost to just below three kilobytes, but they have a slightly different build process. But you can see I'm here, gonna be at roughly 10 gzipped, and it's gonna get smaller. They're using a slightly different compiler, that's why it's smaller. They're using, they don't use uh, Webpack for, uh, do you use roll up? No, just use the closer compiler. Yeah. So they're cheating a little bit, but it's going to become a lot closer to that. The reason it's still a little bit bigger, it still needs to be backwards compatible with version 8. And like I said, this is not completely production ready. I didn't show the IVE application, but it's. It's doing the same thing as before. It's just welcome. And I actually created a second component in this one. But again, the component doesn't have any real code in it. It's just a template, just to try a small application. Did you show the difference between the uh, uh, non-IV versus IV? Uh, have the two, but as far as the size, it's like, see, here is the IV. So I can go back to that one. Yeah. And where you should get really excited about that is where you think about Angular elements. When you actually build something small and want to share that with the rest of a company, and they might be using React like some people hiding in the back there. I'm talking about you, Jens. No, I'm just kidding. So the thing is, like, all of this can actually work together. You build your small whatever, not to do up, but whatever small component you have, create a dashboard. Now that you compile Angular, it becomes really small again. You're only getting what you need. And then you bundle that as a web component. And then the rest of the world can use it, and it will be fast for them to load as well. That's why I, I'm excited about it. No, I mean, Ivy, that, but. That could be like even a selling point. Hey, I compiled this in Ivy and it's this size. Yep. And what's even interesting too is like all these NPM modules that you saw, you could actually pre compile them as well. So you can get rid of a lot of things you actually need to download. So, so you already asked, when can you use IV? So IV going to be opt-in in version 8. And then version 9, we're hoping for it to be default. But of course, that will not happen until it's 100% backwards compatible. But it doesn't mean that you can't use IV. Because if you're not using any of those things that are not ready, then you don't need to worry about it. And if you saw it before, most of the things actually are ready. So if you want to learn more about Ang Angular Ivy, uh, I would suggest Google any of his name from the Angular team, Kara, Steven, Alex, or Rob. They all done talks and have YouTube videos about Angular. And this is a really good blog blog Angular in depth. Uh, you have Max, Uri, and uh, Alexei all writing on that blog about Ivy. And Victor Safkin also had a really interesting post on their website. Thanks, everyone.